Elon Musk is an absolutely ambitious man. To service enough batteries for Tesla cars, he's willing to open two huge battery factories in Nevada and New York for two consecutive years. And now he's building a second Raptor factory in Central Texas, which will be the world's most advanced rocket engine factory. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. SpaceX's engine testing facility on 4,300 acres of land in McGregor, Texas, just south of the city of Waco, is undergoing new development and testing related to the Raptor engine for Starship and Super Heavy. With five test bays, the facility will soon become a hub for Raptor 2 engine assembly, with a factory now under construction. This is taking place as Merlin engine and stage testing related to the upcoming Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy flights continue. Interestingly, the McGregor facility originally was not an engine factory and wasn't built by SpaceX, but it has a long, brilliant history. All the way back after Pearl Harbor and the entrance of the U.S. into World War II, production increased dramatically at home to aid the war effort overseas. In short, munitions factories popped up throughout the nation, and McGregor, Texas was chosen as one of those sites. This site was to be known as the Blue Bonnet Ordnance Plant. The munitions plant started the production of bombs on October 16, 1942. Just like how SpaceX is transforming Boca Chica and the surrounding areas, over 1,100 automobiles and trucks went to and from the plant each day, taking workers to and from the plant. And this place became crowded. Many of the workers at the plant were from out of state and even out of the region. Once the war was over, though, the factory was no longer needed and production was shut down soon after. After the war, the facility was converted to support the development and manufacture of ammonium nitrate-based solid rocket propellants and opened by a number of successive companies. Phillips Petroleum from 1952 to 58, Astrodyne 58 and 59, Rocketdyne from 59 to 78, and Hercules from 78 to 95. In 1995, Hercules transferred their operations to the Allegheny Ballistics Lab in West Virginia ending the manufacture of energetic material at the site. After being handed back over to a munitions company for about 20 years, the facility was finally taken over by an up-and-coming private space company looking to develop heavy lift vehicles. But this company wasn't SpaceX. Set up in 1997, Beale Aerospace came before SpaceX and took over the McGregor site, acting as a testing facility for their rocket engines. In the year 2000, they successfully test-fired their BA-2 engine, the largest rocket engine made since the Saturn V's enormous F-1 engine. However, later that year, the company closed down after NASA decided not to invest in them, so the McGregor facility was once again left empty. Next in line, though, was SpaceX, who took over the site just three years later to begin testing the Merlin engine, which was to be used on their Falcon 9 rocket. And now, to support growing needs of Starship and Super Heavy, SpaceX is building the most advanced rocket engine factory in the world in Central Texas by itself. Musk said the new engine production factory would be in McGregor because of challenges at the South Texas site. He didn't give details. The challenges of operating at Starbase left us with no choice but to put engine production in McGregor, Musk tweeted. Last year, Musk said in a Twitter post that he lives primarily in a Boca Chica home worth $50,000 that he rents from SpaceX. He previously said he moved to Texas to be closer to two of his biggest focuses, SpaceX's South Texas facility and the Tesla facility currently being built in Austin. The billionaire also said he intends to use the new engine production facility near Waco to help fuel his plan for a city on Mars by 2050. Musk said the engines will be needed for a fleet of rockets to be used over a 10-year period to create the city, which he predicts will take about 20 years to build. That's about what's needed over 10 years to create the fleet to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. City itself probably takes roughly 20 years, so hopefully it's built by 2050, Musk wrote. If all goes according to plan, that facility could also become the highest output rocket factory ever built, churning out hundreds of Raptor engines every year to outfit a vast interplanetary fleet of starships and the Earth-bound Super Heavy boosters that would send them on their way to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. According to Musk, a new cutting-edge SpaceX factory located at the company's expansive McGregor, Texas Rocket Development and Testing Facilities factory will ultimately mass-produce between 800 and 1,000 Raptor 2 engines per year. 
Raptor Vacuum production will remain at SpaceX's Hawthorne, California headquarters alongside work on mysterious new experimental designs. Under the new paradigm sketched out by Musk, Raptor would mirror SpaceX's Merlin engine family, comprised of two commonized sea level and vacuum variants, Merlin 1 and Merlin Vacuum, for more than a decade. With just a single high volume variant required, Raptor 2 production could be extraordinarily efficient and would easily outpace any other large liquid engine production in history at 800 to 1,000 engines completed each year. Technically, at its peak in the 1970s and 80s, the Soviet Union was producing hundreds of R7 or Soyuz booster engines annually and upwards of 1,000 plus per year if one counts the several different kinds of engines on each R7 Soyuz booster. However, the annual production of a single variant of any other large liquid rocket in history has never come close to the target set out by Musk for SpaceX's Raptor 2 factory. The idea seemed crazy, but Musk is actually serious about it. In fact, Elon Musk has had lots of experience with similar projects. He lived through the production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 2018, building factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. Luckily, the rewards are well worth the effort. Now Tesla's Giga Shanghai reaches a massive production speed of up to 2,000 vehicles in a single day. Extremely impressive, isn't it? Musk then applied the well worth lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line to SpaceX, and that helps their workers not burn out. They'll work three 12-hour days and then have a four-day weekend. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts with three-day weekends. Thus, with four shifts, Boca Chica can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX is throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. For now, the company is simultaneously building Starship and Super Heavy prototypes and conducting ground tests at the launch site. They've already performed multiple flight tests since 2019 and are preparing to conduct the first orbital test flight with a fully stacked Super Heavy Starship. Two and a half years since the first time Musk shared a photo of the first Starship, SpaceX has so far built Starship serial number 29 and Super Heavy Booster serial number 11. The stacking of a flagship from start to finish right now takes around three months. Pretty impressive, huh? Well, having said that, no space company can beat SpaceX in rocket manufacturing speed. Local leaders are enthusiastic about the jobs and tax dollars that the SpaceX facility and the new rocket factory are bringing. The current McGregor facility employs 500 workers and many more would likely be needed for the new factory. That just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks. We'll see you next time.